Surely you've heard of the Third Reich, which is how Nazi Germany proclaimed itself. They promised fanatical people the rise of an empire that would last a thousand years. But the idea of a thousand-year Reich was not unheard of in the history of the Germanic peoples. Today you will learn about the history of the Holy Roman Empire, also known as the First Reich, an empire that ruled Central Europe for almost a millennium. The Roman Empire was the largest European power in classical antiquity, as its territory covered about 46 current countries stretching across the European, African, and Asian continents. But everything comes to an end. Kings die, alliances are broken, and even the most powerful empires can crumble, producing a dangerous power vacuum and opening the way for the emergence of new powers. With the decline of Roman power in Gaul during the 5th century, local Germanic tribes seized control of several territories. The Merovingian tribe, led by Clovis I, consolidated its power and dominion over other smaller tribes. Clovis I unified the Frankish tribes and became the first king of the Franks. In the mid-8th century, however, the Merovingians were whittled down to a small portion of nobles who ruled their territories in a relapsing manner. The Carolingian dynasty, born out of an ancient Germanic lineage, took the lead in governmental affairs. In 751, Pepin III, son of Martel, became king of the Franks with the support of Pope Zacharias. From this occurrence, the Carolingians maintained a close alliance with the papacy and the Catholic Church. Although there were plenty of well-organized kingdoms, Europe at that point in history was divided and unstable. Wars between kingdoms could break out at any time, and only the intervention of the Catholic Church could often prevent armed conflict. Everything was set to change in 768, when the son of Pepin III, Charlemagne, became king of the Franks and embarked on a major expansion of his kingdom. He ultimately incorporated the territories of present-day France, Germany, northern Italy, and the Low Countries, binding the borders of the Frankish kingdom with the papal lands owned by the Catholic Church. Charlemagne established himself as a fierce defender of the interests of the Church and Christianity. His actions in the fight against some pagan tribes, namely the Lombards, made him a symbol of leadership and a strong candidate for the Emperor of the West, a role that had not been held for more than three centuries. On 25 December 800, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne as the first Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire of Germany. The Carolingian dynasty became the cornerstone of the emerging medieval period. Charlemagne went on to defend his empire and expand it, following the ideal of renewing the Roman Empire until he died in 814. Charlemagne's descendants failed to effectively rule the empire, which eventually split into two parts, West France and East France. After the death of Charlemagne's great-grandson, King Charles III, in 888, the Carolingian Empire broke up and was never restored. By the mid-10th century, another Germanic people, the Saxons, ruled the former empire's territories. The Saxon Emperor Otto III, who reigned from 983 to 1002, established the empire's capital in Rome. After that, popes and emperors quarreled for a long time over the right to elect religious leaders. Otto III died young during 1002 succeeded by his cousin Henry II, who eventually passed away in 1024 and was replaced by Conrad II, the first of the Salian dynasty. However, Conrad was elected king only after much debate between dukes and nobles. This group eventually became the College of Prince Electors, who from the 13th century were privileged to elect the monarch who would be crowned by the Pope. The Holy Roman Empire was made up of four kingdoms, the Kingdom of Germany, the Kingdom of Italy, the Kingdom of Bohemia, and the Kingdom of Burgundy. During the High Middle Ages, kings often hired bishops in administrative matters and frequently determined who would be appointed to ecclesiastical offices. This interference was increasingly seen as ill-suited to the papacy. The emperors of the Hohenstaufen family rose to power in 1138. Frederick I, also known as Frederick Barbarossa, 
was part of the Hohenstaufen family. He was the one who added the word holy to the empire's name. He wanted to be respected as much as the Pope. Frederick died in 1190, and not too long afterwards, the empire lost some of its significance. During the so-called Late Middle Ages, the ongoing difficulties in electing the emperor eventually led to the emergence of a permanent college of prince electors, whose membership and procedures were set out in a decree called the Golden Bull of 1356, which lasted until 1806. The emperor would henceforth be elected by a majority of the nobility, rather than by the assent of all seven electors. For those elected, the title became hereditary, and they had the right to mint coins and exercise jurisdiction. During the 13th century, a dramatic structural change in the way land was managed led to a shift in political power, from aristocratic feudalism to the ascendant bourgeois. The far-reaching development of cities and the emergence of the new bourgeois class alter the social, legal, and economic order of feudalism. For many generations now, the Holy Roman Empire had lacked a strong emperor to rule, but the empire continued to flourish nonetheless. Although imperial authority waned during the late Middle Ages, cities, guilds, and burghers cooperated to improve their position. Meanwhile, the imperial title passed through the Luxembourgish, Bavarian, and Bohemian dynasties to finally fall into the hands of the Austrian Habsburgs in the 15th century. Under Habsburg's rule, the Holy Roman Empire went through an age of great religious conflict. While the imperial family was firmly Catholic, the Protestant Reformation was increasingly gaining momentum in the north of the empire during 1517, when Martin Luther officially broke with the Pope and fragmented Western Christianity. After the Treaty of Westphalia, the Habsburgs stood as Holy Roman Emperors, but their power was increasingly confined to their own Austrian, Bohemian, and Hungarian territories. During the Battle of Vienna that took place in 1683, the army of the Holy Roman Empire, led by Polish King John III, decisively overpowered a large Turkish force, stopping the Ottoman advance in the West and prompting the eventual breakup of the Ottoman Empire in Europe. Throughout the 18th century, the Habsburgs were involved in several European conflicts, such as the War of the Spanish Succession, the War of the Polish Succession, and the War of the Austrian Succession. German dualism between Austria and Prussia dominated the history of the Holy Roman Empire after the year 1740. Around the year 1800, France, which had always been perceived as a major threat to the empire, initiated a new wave of hostilities waged by revolutionary armies. With Napoleon Bonaparte's rise, France marched eastward with unprecedented success. In 1805, Napoleon inflicted such a crushing defeat on the Holy Roman Emperor that his authority outside the Habsburg lands ceased to exist. The following year, the Holy Roman Empire was officially dissolved while the French rearranged most of the German states into their so-called Confederation of the Rhine. After Napoleon's defeat, the Confederation concept remained in force. All German states, including Prussia and Austria, joined the new German Confederation. From this new coalition of states, the borders of modern Germany came into being, although Austria and the Habsburgs were excluded from this project by Prussia's ongoing expansion. In Vienna, the Habsburg family clung to power as emperors of Austria-Hungary and ruled until the unfolding events of the First World War rendered the imperial title obsolete. The millennial history of the Holy Roman Empire is filled with grandiose achievements and tumultuous periods. Its existence was of major importance to European history, helping to shape the ties between many countries and laying down political standards that persist to this day.